Hi, Taurus sisters. It's Amy Gunther. I get a quite oh, well, I get lots of questions often, and I often just hesitate to answer. Um, but I'm going to start answering some of your questions. But, 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 don't just do what Amy does, or don't just believe what Amy says. Just go to Scripture and see what you think the Bible says about what Amy says. Um, so I understand wanting to get feedback from people. Um, and this is for those of you who are new to Torah. Most of you out there have been doing Torah longer than me and you don't need to know what Amy says about anything. But um, a lot, there's a lot of ladies coming to Torah and you're emailing me questions. So I understand wanting to get feedback. Um, and I've been blessed with wonderful ladies in my life who mentor me and have answered my questions over time. So. I will start doing that for you, but please, 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 please go to scripture and see what it says because I will be wrong. Maybe not in this video, maybe not in the next one. Eventually, I will say something wrong and contradictory to scripture. So um, I'm human, I'm gonna do it. And what I've come to terms with is that everyone out there is wrong from time to time and if everyone who is ever going to be wrong stays silent then nobody says anything and so i'm okay with and honestly it's hard for me to make these videos but i'm okay with doing it um with a sincere hope and prayer that it helps you and that the holy spirit speaks through me and um helps me to only say what is right but I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it and try to help you guys navigate this new faith walk of keeping Torah. Um, so here we go. So here's the question that comes up a lot often. I don't know how often it if it's more than others, but it, it it's about what is permissible on the Sabbath, and then maybe also on the high holy days too. What can I do on the Sabbath? What can I not do on the Sabbath? How does this look like? In our society, how do I do this? Um, and I'm gonna go, I have some notes. I'm gonna try to make this short, but I want to also, of course, be thorough because this is a really good question. And I used to ask this question too. And just when you think you have it down and you understand and you're doing it, then um, there's a monkey wrench. Some new situation pops up in your life and your circumstances. And then you think, oh no, now what do I do? I don't know about, because there's so many unique circumstances because we are in exile, we are in Babylon. We're not living in the land under a Torah government where everything shuts down and no one would ever do anything um, other than observe Shabbat in the way the Bible says. So, but we're not there. And so uh, we have all these situations that we're trying to navigate. So, let me remind you right away. I believe that keeping Torah is simple. The Word of God tells us that. It's not too high up and it's not too far away. It's not out of our reach. Obeying the Torah is something that we are capable of. Uh, we can't do all of it. You know, we're not even really doing the feast, right? Because there's no temple and all of that. But the parts that we are capable of are not hard. They're simple. It's very simple to obey the Sabbath commands. but the world makes it hard on us. Um, the worldly situations, our culture makes it hard for us to do these simple things. Does that make sense? So when, when things start to get rocky with your Sabbath keeping and you're, and you're starting to feel frustrated, don't ever throw that frustration back at Yahweh because he's not the one who made it hard. His commands are very simple. It's this fallen world that makes it hard. So always check your perspective. And I understand the struggle. Believe me, I'm living in the world the same as you. Um, you know, I'm the only one in my family walking this out. So I get it. Um, so the next thing I want to say is, of course, you'll never go wrong by following scripture. Um, following, we all know this. And that's why you're trying to keep Sabbath at all is because you love the word of God and you want to follow scripture. Um, so stick to that remember that as your first love and that you want to follow scripture and in doing so you're becoming like yeshua you're walking like he walked as our savior um and if you're reading this and you don't 
know much about this, please know I don't think that keeping Torah gets us saved. I know that we're saved by grace through the blood of Yeshua Jesus. Um, and that keeping Torah is the fruit of our salvation. And most of Torah I was doing when I was part of the mainstream Christian church. Just some external things look a little different now. And I, I interpret some scriptures differently. So we all, how do I say this? When it comes to obedience to the Torah, to the word of God, don't go, don't interpret that and don't determine what is permissible based on your feelings. So I made a, this has been on my mind lately. I see it pop up here and there and on Facebook and in my email inbox and stuff. And I see people wanting to determine what is permissible based on what feels loving or unloving. So if it feels loving, maybe it's permissible to do it. And if it feels unloving, then I'm not going to do that. That's not really biblical. And so I made a meme about this. Um, but, you know, a meme, you can only, you only have very few words to say what you want to say. So let's elaborate on this and let's talk about it. Our feelings are not scripture. Even with the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us and, and guiding our steps, our feelings can still trip us up and cause us to stumble and cause us to go off the narrow path and then cause us trouble when we follow our feelings. And it's sometimes very, very hard to differentiate between the Holy Spirit um, showing us the truth of scripture interpretation versus our feelings, especially when our feelings are feelings of trying to love people. So let's just give an example. On Shabbat, things will come up. Can I go to my nephew's birthday party at a bowling alley, for example? This happens from time to time. I get invited to birthday parties of loved ones, but they're at a place where people are working. So the Torah says, don't make anyone work for you. So if I'm going to a bowling alley, I think people are working for me. So um, that's what you do. Now, in this video, I'm going to try to be careful not to tell you what to do in every situation. Maybe I'm going to make another video someday telling you what Amy does in different situations, and you'll probably get a gist of that here. But what I want you to take away from this is to not, to not determine what is permissible based on your feelings. So my feelings definitely want to go to every birthday party, every, every wedding, every open house, everything. I want to celebrate people. I love these people. And of course, these are not Torah keepers. They're believers, they're family, they're friends. Maybe they're not even believers. My flesh wants to honor their celebrations and to be there and to show them I care about them and to show them that I love them by attending and participating fully. That's my feeling. But sometimes that feeling of love contradicts scripture. Um, and again, it's because they don't know, they don't know that what they're doing contradicts scripture or breaks the Sabbath. Um, so when you start to have these dilemmas come up, it's usually events like this, right? And it happens on the feast days too. You have to just, I recommend, this is what I do. I go back to scripture and I determine if something at that event that I would participate in is violating scripture. And if it is, then I will not do that thing. Now, there's not always just black and white, go or don't go. Consider, and again, ask around and stuff. Um, seek counsel from others. Um, not always me, because I can't answer every email I get. But sometimes you can do something like go and just not eat the catered food. Some people do that. Um, some people will go after sundown, or they'll go until sundown, or whatever the situation is. So consider if there's a way to participate in the parts that you, you feel are not breaking Torah, and then just politely forego the parts that are breaking Torah. So sometimes you can do that, and if you don't feel that's right, then you just don't go. But do you see what I'm saying? Just, just say, because here's the thing. The world, Satan himself, wants everybody to sin. That's his goal. He wants us to sin. And so he's going to whisper in our ear, oh, It'd be so unloving if you don't participate in that. God understands. 
I mean, I've had I've had mainstream Christians tell me this when I say no, I that's I can't do that on Shabbat. It violates Shabbat. They'll say, "Don't you think God understands?" And I'm like, "Isn't that just so?" What the serpent said in the garden, He understands. Um, and to them, it's not a big deal. They don't they don't feel convicted about Shabbat the way I do. So that's not. But for me, because I have this conviction about keeping Shabbat, it matters. And I do believe it matters to the Father. And he doesn't just understand. Is there grace and mercy? Of course there is. But I'm not going to walk into a situation knowing that it's a sin, knowing that, oh, I'll just ask forgiveness later. Like, that's, don't do that. You're going to be just, if you're even asking the question, it's because you're someone who has a circumcised heart and you're bent towards obedience and you want to follow the word of God and walk this out faithfully as best you can. Um, and so don't, don't compromise. Don't go down that road. Here's another thing that you're, if you have um, a family around you, especially family, but also friends, they just don't understand these things. They don't understand where we're coming from. Um, they will use this to try to get you to, to break Shabbat. And they're not trying to get you to sin. They just don't even think it's sin in the first place. Like they just don't understand. So I have I'm not judging those people right now. I'm talking about how we react to them and what's going to happen. So if you go to one event, here's what's going to happen. If you go to one event that somehow breaks Shabbat or violates your feast keeping, whatever it is, they will expect you to do it again and again and again. And then we say, well, I did it this time because it was a really, it was a wedding of someone really close to me. Well, then what about the next wedding of someone not quite as close, but still pretty close? You're going to tell that person, no, I won't go to yours because I guess I don't love you as much as the other person, or you're not as close to me as that other person. So now I'm going to keep my Shabbat convictions. You see where it gets really tricky versus in the first place, if you had politely, lovingly said to them, I cannot participate in that because I believe it violates my conviction of what scripture says about Shabbat. There's no arbitrary relative of, well, I'll go because I really love you. You're really close to me. There's always going to be another circumstance to figure out then. But if you're always just standing by, this is what the word of God says. They will get really used to you saying that. Amy just goes by what she thinks is making people work or buying and selling. She's always trying to use that as her guideline. She's not being wishy-washy about whose activities she goes to or what, how much people have to work or, you know, there's no wishy-washy with me, I hope. Now I will say, I have told my family, I might change my convictions on some of these circumstances over time. And I think a lot of us do because there are so many unique circumstances. And so when we change our conviction, it doesn't mean we don't have the conviction that Shabbat matters and it should be um, observed. It means we're changing our convictions about how to carry it out or what scripture says about how to carry it out. Um, and that's, it's just what it is. <laughs> I will probably change mine over time too. Um, some people, in some ways we get more strict, in some ways we get more permissive. Um, but I always want my friends and family to know that when I say no to something, it's because I believe at this point, this is what scripture says. So I'm obeying scripture, obeying scripture, obeying scripture. I am not picking and choosing how special you are or how rude it would be if I didn't go. Because this is what they say, right? Amy would be so rude if you didn't go. So about that, I have missed what I think are really special events sometimes. Um, and it's, I don't enjoy missing events. I don't. I wish I could go to everything. But I don't regret my decisions either because they know it's because of this deep conviction I have. I'm not just dissing them. Um, and when that happens, I pray a lot that the Father will smooth it over, that he will go before me and soften hearts and help me speak these words in love and kindness and gentleness so that 
people are not offended. Some people will always be offended. You cannot help that. But there is a way to do it in which we can soften the blow and make sure they know as much as they are able to hear and understand um, that we're doing it because this is what scripture says. So explain as much as they are willing to listen. And I'm not saying get all preachy. <laughs> just say, you know, I know you don't agree with my conviction, but this is what my conviction is. And I really just want to go by scripture. So I can't go to that. I'm sorry. But if you did it any other day, I would totally be there because I love you and I wish I could celebrate with you, but I will send a present. Um, let me know if I can make some cookies for you ahead of time. And, you know, you can still do things around the event to celebrate that person. You just maybe can't go to that event. Um, and I'm just using this as one example. So you trust the, you got to obey scripture. And then you trust the father to work it all out somehow. And what is working it out might not be my definition of what I think he should do. Um, my definition of working it out would be all my friends and family would come to Torah and do this with me. You know, that's Amy's, what I think God should do, but that's not clearly what he's doing. So you give it to him, you obey scripture and you give it to him and you let him work it out however he wants to work it out in these invisible ways that you will probably never know. They are watching us. They are watching us like crazy. They are waiting for us to slip up. Um, you know, I've had people try to tell me how to keep Sabbath who aren't even Sabbath keepers. Well, Amy, isn't that breaking Sabbath? And how could you do that? Isn't that breaking Sabbath? And, you know, to me, it's like, it's like someone who's not vegetarian telling a vegetarian how to eat vegetarian. Like, you don't even do this. You don't even believe this. Why are you telling me to do it? And it's because they're trying to find us slipping up and of course they get judaism mixed up with what i'm doing but if i can always go back and say i chose based on don't buy or sell or i chose based on don't work or i chose made my decision based on don't make anyone else work for me or serve me um, <clears throat> excuse me then i have something hardcore of course the scriptures to fall back on and to say this is my reason um, we are to be set apart. We are supposed to be so different from the world. And the world just wants to do whatever feels loving. And so we have to constantly battle that ourselves. Just because we know about this new faith walk doesn't mean we don't have the same fleshly desires that we had before. We're being transformed and we have the power to overcome them but I still have a lot of them. And this is one of them. When it feels nice, when it feels loving, I want to go for it. But I have a, I have a book to check <laughs> myself against. Um, this is this idea, this concept of sin is defined by what is loving or not loving is, is as old as the ages. It's no different. There's nothing new under the sun. There's, um, this is why I'm going to say something. I'm probably going to get kicked off YouTube. There's, this is why there are some Christian denominations who think it's okay for um, a man to marry a man or a woman to marry a woman because it feels loving. You can do it if it feels loving. God would never want you to do something unloving. So they can get married. It's okay, and they will marry them in their church. Uh, it's the same concept as now maybe, I don't know, one was probably more weighty than the other. Maybe, I don't know, but it's the same concept of I can let this Sabbath rule slide because it feels loving. It's the same concept. At least that's how I see it. Um, another example is I'm telling my kids, my kids are not even barely teenagers yet, but I'm telling them when you get older, someday you're going to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And if you just do what feels loving, you're going to get in all kinds of heaps of trouble. And we all understand this, right? Boyfriends and girlfriends. Oh, it feels loving. We can do that. God wouldn't want us to, you know, be unloving to each other. So it feels loving. It must be okay to do. It's the same concept. So I'm teaching my children to check their actions against the word of God and not let their own heart deceive them because our hearts are deceitful. They're wicked and they will get us into trouble. And if we lean on them, we're going to go our own way and we're going to go off the way. So, um, 
and people might call me legalistic. I've been called legalistic. I that word is kind of like a dirty word, the L word, and it means different things to different people. I am not legalistic in the sense that I'm trying to earn my salvation. I already said that, um, but I do try to strictly follow and obey the word of God. So if that's legalistic, I don't know. I guess God is legalistic too because God expects us. He desires for us to strictly obey his word because he loves us. And it's this guardrail that keeps us safe. Um, and he'll work it all out. So, um, so don't compromise. Your kids are watching you. When you start to feel the desire to compromise, if nothing else, remember my kids are watching. I do this all the time. My kids are watching me. And if they see me compromise this time, then what am I teaching them about? My walk doesn't match my talk. Because with my words, I say, sola scriptura. Follow, obey, and trust him. Trust and obey, right? Trust, trust him to work it all out when we walk in obedience. Um, which is funny. It's what Sabbath is all about in the, in the sabbatical year. But if my walk is different from my talk, my kids are going to, they're going to, they might walk away from this someday if they see my walk. Now, when I stumble, and I do, I told you guys, I sin, I mess this up sometimes, I, my flesh gets the best of me, I confess that to my kids. I don't just brush it under the rug and pretend it didn't happen and pray that they didn't notice. I think that's foolish parenting. When you mess up, you got to tell them, I screwed up. Did you see what mommy did? Yep, I messed up. That wasn't what the Bible said. I should have done that situation differently. Um, and the next time, I hope I do it differently. So I think I've said everything I want to say. This faith walk is a cakewalk. Oh, I just made a meme. Um, in that it is simple. Uh, it's not hard to understand or to just to keep Shabbat. We'll just stick mainly with Shabbat. It's the one that really gets us tripped up. Keeping Shabbat is really simple. Interpreting when those Shabbat rules apply can be tricky because the world is asking us things that um, if we were living in the land under a Torah government, the world would never ask of us. You know, I don't, when we all go to the land someday, you know, and back in the days when, when Israel was following the Torah, I don't think anybody had open houses, anniversary parties, um, weddings, birthday parties, 4-H events, carnivals, fairs. I don't think they did any of that on Shabbat. I really don't. I think that they did, if there was a day to honor someone, it was done on a day that was not set aside to rest and spend time with the creator and to honor him. Um, so I, we all long for that day. And if you do things different than me, that is okay. We can still be friends, no problem. Um, again, this is for people who are brand new and they're just really feeling the pressure, usually a family and friends and not knowing what to do. Um, if it's any encouragement to you, I don't like to give my personal experiences too much because everybody is so unique. Uh, okay, I will. When I first started keeping Sabbath, it was maybe six years ago, and I'll never forget it. You know, it's this big emotional event, and I was on my knees crying after weeks and weeks of study. And I finally said, okay, Father, I'll try to keep Torah. I don't know how to keep Torah, so I'm going to mess it up, but I'll try. And so will you please make a way for me to do it. And um, some of you know my story. I had a lot of obstacles back then to keeping Torah. I have not had to break a Sabbath since, since that day I got on my knees. There's been many, many opportunities to break Sabbath. Um, but to my knowledge, I've never at least willingly um, broken the Sabbath. I've always managed to get gas in my car ahead of time. And if I didn't, I stayed home and the world did not end because I stayed home. Um, or I, like I said, I have politely declined many invitations. My kids don't get to do everything that other kids do on Saturdays and they are not jilted for it. They are, their growth is not um, stunted for their development. They are fine, happy kids. In fact, I think they're really happy kids because we have a day of rest. Um, I have been able, um, I've been, and I have been super, super blessed with um, an employer that never makes me work on Sabbath. Um, 
And I know not everybody is in this situation, so that's why I'm careful to say my situation is not your situation. But all I know is that, and all of this is the father's intervention, right? So the only thing I did was I got on my knees and I surrendered. So if you have not done that, do it. And this is not for salvation. This is to say, I'm ready to walk this new, to add this, you know, Sabbath to my faith walk now. Please, please make a way. And then trust him. So when these pressures and these circumstances come on and people are trying to, and again, your, your battle is not against people because who's the prince of this world doing all of this? The reason that there's sticky situation is not because people are, you know, big fat sinners who hate God. It's because there's an enemy who snuck in um, all these things on, on Sabbath. He knows when Sabbath is. Um, so don't be mad at people. Be patient and understanding and long suffering with them because they don't know. And if you're married to a husband who doesn't do the Sabbath stuff, that's a special situation. And some of this video might not apply to that. And I have another video about that. Well, maybe I don't. I'll say it really quick. If your husband does not keep Torah and he says, get in the car, we're going to Home Depot. You have to, I think you should just get in the car with a happy heart and go to Home Depot because the sin is on him. It's not on you. Um, and I don't think anybody goes to hell because they don't keep Sabbath, especially him who doesn't know. I'm assuming he just doesn't understand or doesn't feel that conviction. So if you're a married woman, I do believe you should submit um, in those situations. And that's what I did for a long time. Although, again, he never asked me to get in the car and go to Home Depot. It was just, I was very blessed. Um, so, you know, there's sometimes exceptions to things, but as to, if you are in charge of your own decisions, like me, I'm a single lady, so I can make my own decisions about all of these events. Um, I go by scripture and I try very hard to not go by my feelings. And, um, sometimes I have to take a, a day or a few days to think and pray about every unique situation that comes up, uh, whether or not it's permissible, or if I can do it in a way that is permissible. Um, that isn't uh, obviously breaking the Torah or sending the wrong message to friends and family um, who are sort of waiting for me to trip up. And, um, and I'm really honest with them too. I'll say, you know, you're going to see me mess it up sometime. So if you catch Amy sinning, I'll say the same thing to you. If you catch Amy sinning, it doesn't mean the Torah isn't true and good and should be followed. It just means Amy's a sinner. So um, that's all I have to say. Um, feel free to leave comments and discuss. Make sure your comments are kind. <laughs> if your comments are obnoxious, I delete them. Um, I don't like that on my channel or on my Facebook page, but I hope this helped you. It didn't make it worse, um, but I really think you can trust the Father to work these things out, and that's an exercise of faith, isn't it? When you trust him to work it out, you make a hard decision that you know is going to ruffle feathers and disappoint people. Um, and it's hard, but you trust him to somehow work it out. Um, and you don't know what that's going to look, look, look like, and you might not ever see it, and it might take years. Um, but you have to do what's right, because you'll never regret what's right, never, ever. But when you start compromising um, and, and doing things that you ought not to do, you will have regrets. And then it's hard to sleep and your your spirit is pricked and it's just that's a harder way to live i would rather disappoint people around me than to disappoint my father wouldn't we all that's why we're doing this so i know you're a brave sister i know you are that's why you started keeping sabbath and the feast because you you stepped out in faith like abraham and you said i'm going to go somewhere and i don't know where it is but take me father because i i hear your voice calling me and i know this is what you want me to do so keep up with that. Don't let that, don't let that go. The spirit is still in you. The father is still faithful. He's going to get you through it. Um, so guard his commandments. The best you understand them today, guard them today. So that's it. Love you sisters. Bye.